Hello everyone, this is Liliana Rowena and welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been a while and I know that it probably was like a huge like drop off if you've been watching my videos seeing that I know where my channel is going and no videos at all. Um, my life's been a little hectic and I've been having a really hard time getting motivated. However, here is a review of Paprika by Satoshi Kon. I watched Perfect Blue after watching Super Eye Patch Wolf's breakdown on it. I loved that movie so much, but decided I myself could not do a review on it. Um, however, I absolutely adored his work, so I went and sought out Paprika, which is, first off, a beautiful film. It is gorgeous, and I love the editing cuts. The editing cuts is the stuff of my dreams. Kind of the point, actually. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. And I could go on about how pretty this darn thing is forever. But I want to go on to what stuff that impressed me a little more about it, which was the way that it approached its exploration of dreams. And obviously there's the obvious night and day dreams, which is amazing. But then we have kind of an exploration, although I feel like they could have gone further with it, but I don't know where they would have taken it, of like the aspirational dreams and who do you want to be, especially with, unfortunately, since I didn't have a ton of motivation, I watched this movie like a week ago. I do not remember all the characters' names other than Paprika. Paprika is like the only person whose name I remember. Like the difference between Paprika and the doctor who was her in real life. And kind of like it's just the gap there where she wished she could be more like outgoing and naive and trying to like her dream self quite literally and her helping the other people. Um, I thought that was so cool. I The plot <laughs> And a lot of the stuff I read said the plot was hard to follow. I honestly didn't have a hard time following the plot. Yeah, you blink and you miss it. Yes, you have to watch it. And I would say there's no shame in watching a Satoshi Kon movie the way that you would read a dense piece of literature. Now, I know this might seem a little odd, but to understand this movie, I will admit, I had to pause and rewind at several parts. But I really suggest this if you watch any of his work, kind of like how in English class your teacher would make you look again at a section or reread a part you didn't understand. I know some people might argue that that kind of messes with the flow of the movie, but if you don't know what happened, <laughs> eh, that might get in the way of your understanding. Um, so. It, and the music. I know I'm jumping all over the place a bit, but I thought of it. And the music in this movie is fantastic. I wish I could share it with you, but I'd say just go rent it like I did off of Amazon. It's like $3.99 or something like that. And it is so worth it. So worth it to rent. It is only subtitled, I think, to rent. I think you have to have this other subscription to watch it in English if there's an English version. But it is so worth watching. I really liked um, kind of how they went about going into the dreams and also how dreams and reality kind of blended together at the end, which was awesome and really true and terrifying in a very odd way. Because one big thing through the film, kind of like the unifying plot point, there's several different sub, sub stories which I will get into. But the kind of unifying plot is that someone has stolen the DC Mini, which is this little psychiatric device meant to be used on psychiatric patients, because this is a psychology research center, that allows you to enter people's dreams and help them sort through their stuff. And apparently it has been stolen and weaponized by someone at the at, the, at their research center. Um, I should probably put a spoilers thing because I cannot explain any of these plot points without putting spoilers in here. 
It turns out it's the chairman of the board who was worried that they were going to break the sanctity of dreams while he himself did by creating this horrifying amalgam of what looks like Japanese folklore and modernism and I think kind of I just I had a <laughs> realization um like and kind of symbolizing the chairman's fear of the future and what would this mean but instead of just saying that he kind of just took over people's minds and literally destroyed some people's brains I think I think that's what happened. That's what part of the film I'm a little eh on. It was... Ugh. And now there's several sub stories and the one that I really like is the one with Paprika. Even though all this craziness is going on, Paprika is still trying to help this detective who's the first patient that you see get over a case and work through it and you kind of get to see what the DC Mini was supposed to be used for throughout the film. I really liked it. Again, I'm not going to get all the way into that because I don't know how much recording space I have left of my little camera. I hope to be upgrading soon. Um, but yeah, it's just a very, very cool. And you get to see him like assume different personas and talk about like filmmaking in a film. It's such a cool thing. It's a, probably the easiest subplot to follow, to be honest. Like, if you've got no idea what else is going on, that that's a pretty cool thing to follow. The ending things do break down a bit as far as plot-wise, but that's on purpose because dreams and reality are no longer separate due to this device. Not sure how it did that, in hindsight. How did it do that? <laughs> It's magic? They never offered an explanation as to how it achieved that particular part. And another thing that confuses me about the film is the random insert love story, sort of. Maybe I just missed it. But there's the doctor who invented the DC Mini, and then Paprika, or, well, she's, or the doctor who is Paprika. And towards the end of the film, all of a sudden, because the only thing leading up to this is that she has to help push him into the elevator because he is stuck. Because he's a very large man. And then she's like having a dream while the world is ending. And then she realizes, oh, I loved him all along, even though there's nothing other than that one scene of her pushing him in the elevator. <laughs> and then they're, they're together at the end. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm just assuming some more stuff happened off screen and they consider, hey, you can fill in the blanks, but I feel like since everything in this film is kind of like about personal emotions and conflicts, they should have looked into that. Maybe they just kind of ran out of budget or something? I'm not really sure. Um, it kind of reminds me, reminded me of a lot of Hayao Miyazaki. We watched that in Japanese Culture Club this year. He often has like this random plot point that's never ever visited again. At least they did wrap it up, but it was very clumsily done. Um, but overall, I really recommend this film. Um, what I took away from it was a really awesome just experience. And some things that I wish them I could have well, looked into a little bit more, but I think maybe they just proposed the question. Like, um, at one point, Paprika very quickly says, the internet's a bit like dreams, don't you think? And then they just never went back to that. And I'm like, you could have done really cool stuff with that. I don't know if that had something to do with the time period it was made, because the internet definitely, as far as I know, is not what it is today. Not by a long shot. So maybe they just didn't think to try to explore it more. Maybe they had no idea where this would go. Um, it's just... <laughs> And I also, it was just such a beautiful movie. Like, just, if, for nothing else, even though you're going to be so confused if you are 100% committed to following the plot or rewinding, if you don't feel like doing that, if you just want, like, a beautiful experience, cool editing and cool music, watch it. And if you want kind of like a, like a existential crisis, like, what are dreams? What is reality? Who are we? What are we? Where does our future? I would also recommend this film. So, signing off, this is Liara Rowena, and I hope you have a great night. Bye bye.